Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another edition, rendition of Khan Academy SAT math problems being solved live here on the air. And if you're watching on Instagram, make sure to jump over to my channel on YouTube. Go to YouTube, search for Scalar Learning, and you'll find us there. Today we are tackling right triangle word problems. And I don't know, the camera again is not working. Sometimes this happens on the YouTube live stream. But it's okay because we're doing a share screen today. So we're not going to worry about it. We're going to jump right to the share screen. And we are going to start with the first problem. And here it is. Take the screenshot Move over here. And it is Friday today. Again, I will not be doing one of these Saturday or Sunday, but we'll pick back up on Monday. Here we go. Let us begin. Two football players are located at points A and B in a rectangular football field as shown at left. Point A is 50 yards from the west edge and 25 yards from the south edge. Okay, so they kind of make, you can see what's happening. They're sort of making this little right triangle like this. There's the other side. And point B is located 12 yards from the east edge. And wait from the east edge. So here, I got it. 12 yards from the east edge and zero yards from the south edge because it's on the south edge. What is the distance in yards between the two players? Okay. So we need to figure out, basically, this is a right triangle. We need to figure out the hypotenuse. We need to figure out this distance. How far are these guys away? Well, let's think about it like this. We got a triangle here with 25 on one side. What's this distance? You got to be careful because. You might be tempted oh, me, to say this side is 50, but it's actually the difference of 50 and 12 because we're going from 12 to 50. So that means the side is 38. Okay. And now we need to use Pythagorean's theorem. That's it to find AB. So what's the formula? It's, 30, it's uh, A squared, we can call it 25 squared, plus 38 squared. And it says, oh, round to the nearest tenth of a yard. I'm probably going to need a calculator for this. Equals C squared. So I'll do the first part here. What's 38 squared? I'm going to do it really fast. 6, 24, 30, 0, and that's 4, 0, 3. Oh, no. No, it's not. Sorry. Went a little too fast here. Okay. And then the next part is 24. Okay, the 2, 9, 11. Four, 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 one. Okay. And 25 squared, I know, 625 plus 1, 4, 4, 4 equals C squared. And this is 2,000, right, and 69. I don't know what the square root of 2,069 is. So we're going to actually have to jump to a calculator. We'll go like this. Use good old Google Calculator. 2,000 and square root of 2,069 equals 45.5 because it wants us to round to the nearest tenth. So we would get would be 45.5. All right, let's see if that is the same as what they got. Check it. Yes, it is correct. Let's move on to question number two. Here we go. Let's delete all this. Whoops. Here we go. Question number two. Nice. Okay. Wahantan is cooking a breadstick on a rectangular baking sheet measuring nine and a half inches by... 13 inches, let's go ahead and draw it out. So we got 13 inches. You can do it either way. Doesn't matter which one's length or height or width. 9.5. Assuming the breadstick width is negligible, what is the longest breadstick wonton could bake by fitting in a straight line along the diagonal? Here's our diagonal, right? Because this whole thing is, is just like a big rectangular sheet. Oops. And We've got our diagonal. What is this? It's a right triangle again. So we're going to have to 
set up our same formula. It's 9.5 squared, a squared, plus 13 squared, that's b squared, equals c squared, Pythagorean's theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And what is the answer? This is 169. We're going to need a little calculator help. Make this a little faster. Oops. So what's 9.5 squared? That's 90.25. Right? So we say 90.25 Oops. plus that equals c squared. And this becomes 259.25 equals c squared. And then we square root both sides. So what's the square root? 259.25. 259.25. Oops. We want square root of 259. 16.1. We're rounding. Oh no, to the nearest inch, so 16. It's right here, B. Good old multiple choice. All right, now we're on to question number three. Let's jump in here. Boom, we take this, we take this. All right, see. Due to weather, a barge captain decides to reach her destination in two legs, one due north and one due west. On a direct route, her destination is about 1830 miles away. See the figure above. So here's the destination that she's trying to go to, and here's her starting point. If after traveling 605 miles north, it is time to head due west, how many more miles are left in the trip now? This is still Pythagorean's theorem, but this time we're not trying to solve for the hypotenuse. And so we got to set it up like this. It is 605 squared. That's our a squared plus b squared. That's our variable. We don't know what b squared is equals 1830 squared. So we're going to have to isolate for b. These are huge numbers. This is absolutely a calculated problem. I have to use a calculator. So 605 squared is 366025, right? 366025 plus b squared equals, and then what's 1830 squared? 1830 squared. 334,8900. 334,8900. We're going to subtract 366025. These numbers are ridiculous. 366025. Could probably do this quickly. 8, 10, 9, 10, 5, 7, 8, 2, uh, 2, and this is 8. This is 9, 2. So 2982875. And we need to take now, finally, that equals b squared. And then we got to take the square root of both sides. Oops, undo that. Take the square root of both sides, all right? So that's 2982875. 2982875. Try out those numbers, right? Yes. So it's 1727.1. And the nearest mile, so 1727. And I, I, you actually should have known it had to be nearest mile because you can't have greater than four digits in these questions. I think that's right. What was it, 1727? Yeah, it was. Beautiful. Two questions left, and then we begin our day. All right, here we go. All right, now it says Abby is buying a rectangular widescreen TV that she will hang on the wall between two windows such that the longer side of the TV is horizontal. Okay.
All righty. Hang the wall between two windows such that the longer side of the TV is horizontal, right? Oh, and between two windows, we got to draw, I don't know, like this. Here's our windows. The windows are 36 inches apart horizontally, so that from here to here is 36 inches. And a wide screen TV is approximately twice as wide as it is tall. The following, which is the longest that the diagonal of the widescreen TV can measure and still fit between the windows? While if it's 36 inches, and they said this is about, so of course the the width can be 36. What is the height? Well, it's approximately twice as wide as it's tall. So this means th this width has to be twice as long as the height. So we guess we could have 18, right? So let's put it, so we have 18 by 36. And now we just calculate the diagonal, right? Triangle again, we're trying to find the hypotenuse. So it's eight, I'll, I'll draw it over here again, 18 by 36, so 18 by 36 triangle. So we got 18 squared, this is our C, plus 36 squared equals C squared. Let's go ahead and jump into the, I think it's, what is it, 324 I think is 18 squared, I can't remember. So it's 18, squared yeah it's 324 plus 36 squared equals 1620 so 1620 equals c squared let me get a square root both sides to solve for this so what is the and this does a really nice job here we can say square root of answer right That's 1620 what do we get? 40.24. 40.24. Oh, wait. This is too big. That's the closest, which is the longest that the diagonal and measure and still fit between the windows. Though it says approximately twice as wide as it is tall. So, see, this is a little dicey because... What if it's a little more than twice as tall? I don't like this wording. Uh, if we go to 42, right? See, this is the tricky part. If it's, what if this is like a 19 or a 20? Then that would extend it, right? If we did it for 20, it would actually make it, right? You know, just do the quick calculation. I'm trying to see. And this is a little troubling because we can do 20 plus, what was it, 36 inches. Let me just quickly try this out. And then we take the square root of like this exam, this answer. You know, oh, we're still under 42. But eventually, the point is, is approximately guess. So what is the answer? Is it 42 or 32? And... I guess I'm going to go with 32 because these two calculations I, I just did with 18 and 20 for, for the one side, for this side over here, I'm getting under 42. I'm getting like 40. So let's see. Let's, let's go ahead and answer 32. I want to see what they say. This may very well be wrong. No, it is right. Okay. So, yeah, they did do exactly 18. See, they, they shouldn't say approximately twice. They should say it's twice because... You know what I mean? This is, it's a little inaccurate. 1600, yeah, okay. All right, fair enough. Yeah, so it says exactly that, 42 inches is too large. Yeah, that was some ambiguous phrasing though. Let's try this one here. Last one, number five for the day, for the win. Here we go. Question number five. And again, Instagram people, thank you guys so much for watching. But if you want to see the actual problems being solved, just jump on my YouTube channel. Go to YouTube and search for Scale at Learning. And you'll still see the live stream. You can watch the whole uploaded video later. Bilal is assembling a set of bunk beds and wants to make sure that the support posts are perpendicular to the post I and mean, to the floor. He measures that the posts are 165 centimeters tall. 
and 220 centimeters apart. How long should the diagonal measurement be in centimeters if the support posts are perpendicular to the floor, meaning there's a right angle there? What do we have here again? Well, of course we're in right triangle zone, so we should know that this is a right triangle. But now let's take a look and see if we can calculate this. We got our A, we got our B, so we just need to find C. So it's A squared, again, plus B squared, oops, equals C squared. So 165 squared plus 220 squared equals C squared. We're gonna do this whole thing on the, on the calculator. So let's do it like this. 165 squared plus 220 squared equals that, 75625. Let's write it here. 75625 equals C squared. And then we square root both sides. So we don't want C squared, we want C. What's the square root of 75625? Answer, which is our 75625. Oh, it's a perfect square. Very nice, 275. How lovely. No rounding necessary. I'd say that's definitely right. Awesome. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We are done. Let's turn off the share screen here. All right, again, my camera is messed up again. For some reason, with the YouTube live stream, I don't know. But anyways, that is all we have for today. I hope it was helpful. Have an amazing Friday. I'm looking forward to my Friday. And thank you guys so much for joining. And again, please like this video if it was helpful. Comment below if you have additional questions or if you just want to tell me that you like what you saw or you didn't like what you saw, either way. And lastly, subscribe if you have not done so yet. Please subscribe so you can get all these videos shot right to you so you know when they're coming out and you can get the most help as possible on the SAT. Thank you guys so much and have an awesome day. Take it easy.